Good morning, my brothers and sisters. This is uh, lesson um, 100, and we are gonna be talking about worship, the true worship of God, Jesus Christ, the true worship, how, how you're supposed to worship him. Um, God was talking to me, and he, want, he was telling me that my people don't understand what true worship is and he wanted me to teach it to you. And so that's what we're gonna talk about this morning. So good to see you this morning again. Um, um, I've been out studying uh, some things that God want me to study to show you. So there are some times I have to take off and just get along with God. And that's what I've been doing. And so now I'm back to deliver you what God has shown me. And um, Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. Father God, I'm asking you to open up the eyes and the ears so that your people can hear what the word is saying to their spirits, oh Lord. And they may have ears to hear and eyes to see the glory of the Lord coming to make them just like you, my Father, and your precious Son, Jesus Christ. And Father, as, we, as I ask you, O oh Lord, attend to their needs and, 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 and give them strength, O oh Lord, to carry on when they're weak. And only you can do that, Father. And I just thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer because you have always heard my prayer. And I thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Um, I'm going I'm to start reading this summary. I wrote up a little summary for it, and now I got some scriptures to go behind it. Um, it says, Jesus said to said the life of the worshiper is a focused life characterized by the Holy Spirit with the word, prayer, fasting, and a personal relationship with God. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he told Peter, keep alert and pray. Otherwise, temptation will over power you. Temptation will overpower you, power you. That's why we have to keep praying because temptation going to come every day at us. And we don't know when it's coming, where it's coming from, but we have to be prepared for it. And this is what he was trying to teach his disciples. <clears throat> for the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. The flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but we get weak sometimes. So that's why we need to pray. And this is a form. This is what I want you to understand too. There, there's over, uh, and this down in my lesson too, but there's over 50 ways that you can worship God. It's not just standing up in church and, and, and worshiping God, although that's good too. But here God want me to really, really, dig down deep and explain it to you so that you will truly understand the real worship of God. Um, for this, okay, no, no, no. Oh, you'll find that in Mark 14, 38. And again, I, I always read from the New Living Translation Bible. If some of you don't understand that, but that's what I read from because it better, it, it gives you better understanding and you can and, and and you can hear the word much better and much clearer, uh, so that you can understand it. I read the King James Bible. I read the uh, Schofield Bible. Um, I read the um, um, New King James Spirit Field Bible. But there's so there's a lot of Bibles out there. I, I read, but I read to get an understanding. No, they don't say all the same thing, but they're talking about the same thing. And that's what you got to realize. There's different words, but even though there's different words, but have the same meaning. And that's what you got to realize. Um, and then it says, Jesus also taught the uh, Ectolians worship from, oh no, follow from a heart filled with love for God. Filled with a love for God. This is what it's all about. We have to have a feel for the love of God in us in order to do this. In order to worship God, 
we gotta have a feel for, we gotta have a love for him. Okay, quoting the prophet Isaiah, he said, the, these uh, people honor me with their lips. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. See, this is, this is what God is trying to tell us. You worship me, but your heart, it ain't right. You outside work. Okay, you show a good appearance that you're right with God. But inside words, this is where the problem is. This is what I need for you to clean up. This is what I need for you to change and, and, and let me, let the Holy Spirit help you change and give you the strength to change. And you, um, yeah, your heart is far from me. Uh, their worship is a mockery. You hear what it said? Your worship is a mockery when you do this, when your heart is not in it. It's a mockery. God, isn't, ain't he, God is not pleased with it. He won't even accept your worship when it's like this. Um, for the place of God commands with their own, own with, they, with, the, with their own man made teaching. For they replace God's commands with their own man-made uh, teaching, just like the Pharisees. They replace they 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 replace God's command with their own teachings. They created 450 some laws just to suppress the people, and this is what God is upset with. <clears throat> and you find that in Mark seven and seven. And then it says, let me offer three uh, thoughts about Jesus teaching on worship. On worship. Um, first, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Second, Jesus and the Samaritan woman. And third, the Lord's Prayer. It's filled with over 50 lessons about worshiping God. <clears throat> God bless worshipers. And that's in Matthew 5, uh, 3 through 12. And this is where he's talking about blessed, uh, 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 the inherit, blessed those who inherit the kingdom of God. All the blessings is just what he's talking about. Um, number one says, worshipers are salt, are salts. Worshippers are salt. Worshippers are salt, and to the light of to the world. Uh, and that's in Matthew five thirteen through sixteen. Number three says worshippers must obey God's command, and that's in Matthew five seventeen through twenty. And um, your. Worshippers must obey God's command. Hmm. My eyes getting seeing double right now. Wow. Okay. Okay. Number three. Worshippers must obey God's command. Uh, Matthew five seventeen and 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 twenty. I had to gather my eyes. They just started seeing double. Uh, four says anger and worship. That's five, and that's in Matthew 5, 21, 26. And then in number five says thoughts matter. And that's in five, Matthew 5, 27, 30. And number six says promises. And that's in Matthew 5, 33 and 37. Number seven. Uh, is always act like your father in heaven. See, these are worship things that we're supposed to be doing. See, when we do these things, we worship God. That's how we truly are supposed to worship God. We're supposed to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. And everything we, we mark, when we mark Jesus, let me, let me put it this way. We're supposed to worship the God, worship the ground that Jesus walks on. 
Say for instance, uh, you have family members, uh, your uncles or your aunts or somebody in the family that you, you, you worship the ground that they walk on because they have a way of doing things that appears to you, appeal to you. And so you want to be just like them, just like your daddy. If you have a great dad or great, great mother, parents, you want to be just like them, but you want to be better than them. You see, this is what Jesus told his disciples. He said, after I go away, he said that uh, he's going to send the Holy Spirit. And he's going to teach you all things. And he wanted, and, 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 and you will be even greater than, than he was. So this is how I am with my daughter. I want them, and sons, I want them to be greater than what I was. That's what I want. And this is what Jesus wants us to be greater than what he was. Because that's his words. So, but I worship the ground that my mother walked on. I mean, I just wanted to be just like her. I wanted my prayer life to be, be like her. I saw strength in her. I wanted my strength to be just like her. And I just saw so much wisdom. I wanted wisdom like her. You see, she, had, she, she, she was a six foot uh, tall woman, but she had a tall stature, which everybody respects. You see, and this is what God does. God wants us to respect him and his son, Jesus Christ. Because we need to worship. We need to act just like him. And that is the true worship of God. It's when you can act like God, Christ, the Holy Spirit, do everything that the Holy Spirit says. That's when you're worshiping God. Because when you do not do what the Holy Spirit says, you're not, you're not worshiping God. You see, God wants to be glorified. He's glorified in you doing the same thing that Jesus did. What did he tell his son? This is my son who I am well pleased. You see, this is what it's all about. God wants to be pleased with you because he sees you following in his son's footsteps. This is the true worship of God. And this is what we're supposed to be doing. Not like the Pharisees, but like Jesus Christ and all the prophets and all the forefathers that came before us. We're supposed to be following in their footsteps, being just like Christ, being obedient. Okay, let me, let me go continue. Um, Okay, number eight says good deeds. We got to do good deeds. Number and 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 and, and that's in uh, Matthew six and one. Then number nine says giving. We got to be giving people. That's an act of worship. Numbers, uh, no, that's in Matthew six and two. Okay, number ten says praying, just like Daniel did. He prayed three times a day, just like uh, 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 Elijah did. He prayed all the time. And he got his prayers answered too. Key example of people who prayed and their prayers became true because they had a real worship with God. They act, they act like God. They look like God. People in, that were surrounded by them, they knew that they were godly. You see? Because they didn't do the same. Those, those people, those prophets, didn't do the same thing that those other people did or that Israel did. They followed the very path of God. Um, number, uh, where was I? Okay, yeah, prayer is in Matthew 6, uh, 9 through 13. And number 11 is forgiveness. We got to be able to forgive people. And that's in Matthew 6 and 14. Number 12 is fasting. We got to be able to do the true fast. And that was what that was in my last lesson where I taught in, in, in lesson 99, which is the true fast. And it's all about putting on this whole armor, everything that God wants us to put on. That's the only way we can truly fast and where God will appreciate it and, and, and glorify in it. Um, and that's in Matthew 6, 16 through 18, 13. Um, priorities. We have to put our priorities in order. We have to. And that's in Matthew 6, 7, 19 through 21. 14 is money. 
money. You always got to remember that money belongs to God. I don't care how much money you make, it still belongs to God. So you have to ask God, God, how do you want me to spend it? What do you want me to do with it? You see, you got to learn how to do that. Um, let me see here. Uh, that's in Matthew 6 and 24. Number 15 is worrying. We can't afford to worry. The Bible says fear not, and we're not supposed to fear. Um, and then number, that's, that's in 20, uh, Matthew 6 and 25. Uh, number 16, it says, uh, condemning others. We're not supposed to condemn others. And that's in Matthew 7, 1 through 5. And number 17 is, <clears throat> ask God for good things. And that's in Matthew 7, 7 through 11. Number 18. Um, oh, no, no shortcuts. We don't do any shortcuts with God. There's no shortcut getting to Christ. If we got to suffer, we got to suffer. That's what he said. We shall suffer. Some people don't want to suffer, but you got to. That's how you get to know him. That's how you get to trust him and lean on him. Okay. Um, Okay, shortcuts. Okay, number nine, and that's in Matthew 7, 13 through 14. Number, number 19 says, watch. Watch out for false teachers. Very important. A lot of false, false teachers in the world. Ever since Jesus left, a lot of false teachers. You got to watch out for them. And there's a lesson on that as well. And I'm going to teach that next, uh, the next section. That's going to be 101. And I'm going to teach you about these false, these false teachers and prophets. Um, that's in Matthew 7, 15 through 20. And then uh, number 20 says, worship is worthless without obedience. See what I, mean? I told you? Worship ain't, it's no good. If you're, not gonna, if you're not willing to obey God, your worship ain't no good. No good. And that's in Matthew 7, 21 through 27. Okay, now we're going to jump down into the prayer, the Lord's Prayer. It says further, the Lord's Prayer offers wonderful uh, insight into worship. Wonderful insight. Often, re often referred to as the model prayer. It's a model that God gave us. Oh, it's a reason why they gave it to me. I didn't understand it, but I fully understand it now. There's nothing like good understanding, I tell you. Um, it shows us not only is prayer an act of worship, but the prayer, but the Lord's prayer also is a prayer of worship. Uh, incorporating incorpor, mm, incorporating uh, get tongue tied. It uh, five things of worship. Okay, number one is uh, our, when we we're talking about the Lord's Prayer now. And it says, our Father. We worship God, our Father. Uh, number two, uh, uh, which are in heaven. He's talking about heaven. Our Father who is in heaven. Uh, Hollywood, number three is Hollywood, be thy name. And then number five says, the kingdom come. His kingdom come to us. His his lifestyle come and and, and, and and intercedes for us, takes over us, and it becomes our lifestyle now. His lifestyle becomes our, our lifestyle becomes his lifestyle. You see, we got to take on his lifestyle. In other words, um. And then it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Christ was worshiping his father when he said these words. That's why he taught this prayer to his disciples. This is how you got to be. This is how you must be. Follow in my footsteps. This is what I did. Um... Oh, okay, number seven, as it is in heaven, 
Uh, number eight, give us this day our daily bread. Give us this word every day, Lord, that comes from heaven. Give it to us. We need it, Lord. Number nine says, and, and forgive us our debts. Yes, Lord, we don't make many mistakes. We done did so much wrong, but please forgive us. Thank you for going for the, to the cross, Lord, and taking away all our sins on the cross. Thank you, Lord. Uh, number 10, as we forgive our debtors, we got to do something, too. We got to forgive those people who do, do wrong to us, too. Our enemies, we got we to gotta forgive them. We got to love them, too. Jesus did, so why can't we? We're not, we're not, we're not better than Jesus. We have to do the same thing as He did for His Father, His Father, so that God can get glory out of us as well. Number eleven says, "Lead us not into temptation. Don't please don't lead us into temptation." That's what this prayer is all about. Mm. Number twelve says, "But deliver us from evil." Mm. Yes, Lord. Number 13 says, for thine is the kingdom. Thine is the kingdom, your kingdom, Lord. You're honoring his kingdom. That's what you're doing. You're respecting his kingdom. Number 14, and the power, all your power, Lord, all your power, just like you did when you gave Jesus. You gave him all your power. All your power you, we gave him. And number 15 says, and the glory, all his glory. 16 says forever, amen. And it will continue forever, forever. We will live with Jesus Christ in the room in Jerusalem forever. And then it says, um, there's a worship on the, the, sermon, the, the, the sermon on the mount. And it says, finally, Jesus taught about worship. Number one, by the way, he lived his life. He lived his life in worship because he acted it out. He did all these things every day of his life for his father so his father could be glorified through him. And he could be the per perfect example so that we can follow in his footsteps. Um, he set a high standard and exceeded it. He completely fulfilled the will of his father. Number four, facing all the shame, that facing all the same temptation we face without sin. We face the same thing, but he did it without sin. He without sinning. We face it, but we sin, you see. Thank God for Jesus and thank God for forgiveness. Um, mm, number five. He chose to worship God rather than to give in to temptation. You see, he chose to do that. This is what we have to do. We have to choose to worship God, to do what he said. We have just a choice, you see, than to worship temptation, than to worship the devil. And do what he does, we just a choice. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. And you'll find that in Luke 4 and 8. He was baptized. Just like us. We were baptized. He was obedient to the Father by enduring the cross. Remember when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane? He didn't want, he did not want to, to leave us. But he said, Not my will, Father, but your will be done. He knew he had to do it so that we could be saved. He knew that. So he went on and took on the challenge and died for us. Um, and you'll find that in Luke 4 and 8. Number 6 says, how? No, okay, no, 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 not that one. We're do it, cross. Um, he was obedient to the Father by enduring in the cross. Hebrews 12 and 2. He observed the Sabbath. He kept it holy. Mm. And number nine says, go in the, through in the synagogues, Mark six and, and two. Number 10 says, Jesus uh, meditated on scripture. 
Jesus meditated on God's scripture day in and day out. This is what we have to do. This is how we worship God, by meditating on his precious word. Number 11 says, he, he, he sang a hymn. He even sang a hymn as well. And you find that in Matthew 26 and 30. Peter tells us, this is the king of the, this is the kind of life you've been invited into. The kind of life Christ lived. He suffered everything that came in, that came his way. So you would know that it could be done. And also know how to do it step by step. And you'll find that in 1 Peter 2, 21 through 22. And i um, going to talk about one scripture here. Uh, this is in John uh, 4, 21. John, John 4, 21 through 38. Um, and it says, we must worship God in spirit and in truth. And this is talking about Jesus and the, and, and the Samaritan woman. And then it's going to be, uh, number 21 says, Jesus, Jesus replied, uh, believe me, dear woman, that time is coming when, when it will no longer matter where you worship the Father, on the mountain or in Jerusalem. Emma 22 says, you're, you're some, you Samaritan know very little about the one who, who, who worship, about the one who you need to worship. You know little about that man, Jesus. Well, we Jews know all about him, for salvation comes through the Jews. Jesus is sitting down talking to the woman, and he is trying to let her know that there's a form of worship that you have to worship. And you're not and you're not even standing up to that worship. Number 23 says, but the time is coming indeed. It's here, it's here right now. When true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. God is looking for those people. Uh 24 says. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He talked, giving this woman a good talking to. 23, 25 says, the woman said, I know the, I know the Messiah is coming. The one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to me. He didn't know she was, she, she didn't know she was sitting right there in front of his face. 26, then, 26 says, then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Uh, uh, uh. But uh, number 32 says, but Jesus replied, I have, the, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. The food that I have to give you, you don't know nothing about that food. You don't even know nothing about the true worship. Mm. Number 33 says, did someone bring, okay, this is when the disciples came back. And it's, read that whole chapter, that whole fourth chapter of John. Read the whole fourth chapter. And it's, I, I'm just reading parts and bits of it so that I could, I could get a, get, so that you can get a better understanding of it. Um, and then it says, did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples, the disciples asked each other. Uh, number th okay, number 34 says, then Jesus replied, my, my, uh, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from, and from finishing his work. See, Jesus letting them know, no, I, I don't need that food. I need the food of my father. Whatever he tells me to do, that's what so, so sustains me and gives me strength. Number 35 says, you know, you know the saying, four months between 
between planting and harvesting. But I say, walk, wake up and look around. The, field, the fields are already ripe for harvest. That's what he's letting, he's teaching to his disciples now. And then number 36 says, the harvest are, are, are paid good wages. The harvesters are paid good wages. And the fruit uh, they harvest is people brought to eternal life. Now he's breaking it down real clean and simple. I, I want you to do this for me. You need to tell these people about Jesus, which is, and that's how we feed our sheep. Um, what joy awaits both the planter and the harvesters alike. Number 37, you know the saying, one plant and another one harvest. And it's true. Number 30, number 38 says, it's, no, I, I sent you a harvest uh, where you didn't plant. Others had already done the work. And now you will get the get to gather the harvest. And what he's saying was the prophets had already came before them. The, the, the ancestors had already came before them. They planted the seed of God. But now you can now you got a chance to harvest it, harvest it. And that's that, that can be an easy job or a hard job. No matter. It doesn't matter. This is what we have to do. We have to plant this seed so that people will understand this worship, this worship that God has given us. These attributes that God has, that God has, we must take on the attribute. This is how we worship God. This is the best way to worship God is to be just like him and to do everything just like him. This is the only way that we can serve God to the fullest and God will be pleased in it like he told David. David is the apple of my eye. Why was he the apple of David? David was a mess up too. He messed up all the time. But why was he the apple? Because David had the heart of God. He wanted to do right. He desired to do right. Sure, he messed up a couple of times. That's what God is telling you. You're going to mess up a couple of times. Ten times. He said, I forgive you seven, seven times, 70 times a day. That's a lot of forgiveness in a day. A lot of forgiveness. A lot of wiggle room. That's why he said, come boldly before the throne of grace. You ain't got to worry about it because I done paid for your, paid for your salvation. This is what we got to remember. This is why we must serve God and worship him. We got to worship him through what we do for him. We got to be obedient because this is what brings on the true worship of God. Whatever God tells you to do, you do it. You don't know what to do, ask him. If he says, uh, uh, don't do anything, don't do nothing. Don't go out there and do, I'm going to talk about this in the next le in the next lesson, the false teachers. But if, you, if, if God ain't told you nothing to do, don't do it. Because what you do, you make up your own stuff. And God ain't in that either. But anyway, God loves you. I love you. And my brothers and sisters. Obey the word of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Until we meet again. Amen.